Hey there, you beautiful people. Now today, this video is all about my regrets when it comes to building and designing this house right behind me. Now, if you've been following the channel or me for any significant amount of time, you guys know that I hand built this house by myself and it took me a long time. But we are gonna go all about what I really regret, what I wish I'd done differently and how I could have saved a lot of money, actually a ton of money. But before we get into it, remember only about 15 to 20% of you who are watching this right now are actually subscribed to the channel. And on this channel, I show you guys how I'm gonna build a glamping site over here. And you guys see that? My next video is talking about the shipping container house and shop that I'm building right there. That's where those stakes, that's where the foundation is gonna go. But that's for a later video. Today, we are talking about this and what we can learn from building. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's get started. Okay, hey, Kai from the future here, putting a pause to Kai outside. I just wanna take a moment and say, on this channel, what I'm doing is, I'm taking you through the process of how I build out pieces of property and land in a very non-traditional way. And these are things and ways where it doesn't take a ton of money. It does take a lot of work, does take a lot of time, but moving forward, I'm gonna share a lot more about the ins and outs of how I take pieces of land like this one from raw, overgrown with weeds and trees and blackberry bushes, to being worth well over a million dollars. And right now we're in the midst of creating a big project that we're gonna talk a little bit more about where I'm gonna be building out a couple of other income streams on this one piece of property and why I'm buying other pieces of property to do something kind of similar, but not. But back to Kai outside and I'll see you back in here in a little bit later in this video. All right, let's go. Okay, so the theme for the video today is pay once, cry once. And I wish I had learned this before, but you know, I was relatively new. I had remodeled and done a little, little construction project, but never taken on a whole build process by myself. But I wanted to build as inexpensive as possible with quality materials. With that said, it was because I didn't want to run way over budget. I only had a certain amount of money allotted for this house. I'll show some photos right here is the house had metal siding. And the reason why I had metal siding and wood siding was because it was the least expensive option. Option. When you go to, I guess vinyl, I think it's even cheaper than vinyl. To side the whole house, it only cost me about 4,000, maybe 5,000 materials and then screws and such. In hindsight though, I wish I had done this from the get go. If you guys watch my previous videos, you guys noticed that I hadn't made videos for the last three, four months is because I was residing the entire house by myself again, which is so stupid. But. James Hardy plank and behind it I created a rain screen with more insulation. This ended up costing me just materials alone was about $35,000 give or take. Now the reason why I wish I had done that from the very beginning is that first of all I would have saved that $5,000 and maybe a month's worth of time of re of siding the place in the first place but also it just looks better. It looks cleaner right? Doesn't that look cool? If you guys can see that. It just looks way better than the metal. So that's my first one. Pay once, cry once, take care of it, make it look good the first time. The second thing is related to what's behind me right now. You see this window? It's waterproofing and sealing the windows properly. Now again, in the beginning, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I skipped a few steps waterproofing and sealing the windows. And it creates a huge headache because you have to do it right from both the inside and the outside. So now I was able to flash everything correctly. You see this black frame that's around the window? That's a piece of it that helps direct water away from the windowsill itself. And then around the top and the sides, I did all the proper window flashing and everything. And if you guys want to see details, there's a bunch of great videos online, but just Google it, you'll find it. And so just don't do it on your own or talk to local contractors because sometimes they don't do the right thing and they get sued. So I had to fix those areas and I'm glad now that it's finished, but on the inside, I can't fix it. And the reason behind that, and I'll show you guys here, as you can see, I don't have the traditional casing around the window. I had this, when I did the drywall, I had them drywall all around the window. So to give it more of like a modern look, which I really love. But since I didn't seal the window correctly, there's some air that can move from the outside to the inside, inside to the outside, which, you know, it's not the greatest for the heating cooling bill. But to be honest, ever since I did the exterior insulation and the new siding, man, oh man, it makes a huge difference. I mean, my power bill is literally probably 20 to 30% less because I don't have to cool it down. And as we're getting into these winter months, I'm not gonna have to heat it up as much, but that's also my other previous video I got right above here this ladybug right above here i put in a new pellet stove and so that's warming up the entire house perfectly all right which leads me to my third thing that i really regret or i wish i'd done differently 
are these doors. The house, as you guys can see from the outside, is more of a modern industrial shipping container type of look with very square lines. And it doesn't really fit with that type of door. And so if I could do it all over again, I would have pay once, cry once, and gotten the really nice modern doors that's more flat and more sturdy. These ones are just like the standard kind of like flimsy doors. I could probably kick through it. I can probably kick through it, but they're not like super sturdy like those metal ones. These cost me a couple hundred, like 200, 300 bucks. The other ones I'm talking about are like 2000 to $5,000. So there's a give and take there. The other thing too is flashing the door sill really well. And so we get really heavy rains here with really, really strong winds and it blows the water straight into the door. Don't, no matter what they tell you, these joints right here in the doors, they're not waterproof, not waterproof in the least. I'll put a picture up here on the screen and you'll see what I used underneath it. It's just a door sill. So when water does get back there, it just directs it right back out. Wish I'd done the beginning. I changed my front door three times because of it. Now the next thing is we just walked out of the rental and it's attached to the main house. And I spent a lot of money. I spent probably another extra 10, maybe $15,000 trying to soundproof it. I wish I had just done a separate shop and I would put an apartment either above or next to it or something like that. And that way I would have a ton of space for either my cars or my tools and then also um, a private, completely private space for uh, my guests and tenants. And then, you know, hindsight's always 20, 20. This rental in itself, it cost me an extra $18,000 to build and attach onto the building. It paid for itself within a couple months. And honestly, if I had built a shop, it would have cost me an extra maybe $50,000, $60,000. I would have paid for that within well under a year, just renting out the rental. Now, the last thing before we actually head into my studio and we talk about more of the nuts and bolts of the whole build process. The thing that I really wish I did differently was that is plan out the electrical panel and the water manifold, which I'll show you here in a second for future modifications and future needs. So I knew that this area was going to have someday a stove. So back there, there's a 50 amp wire sticking out, but I thought about that ahead of time. However, I did not think about doing one for potentially a glamping site or a shop over there or another shipping container home. And I try to do it. Sometimes you just don't know what the future is gonna hold for you. But my suggestion or my thing that I would have done differently is really think through everything I potentially potentially would do and do it all at that time. It would have been nice. And so like right now, I'm gonna have to rerun a bunch of wire through the whole house, through the crawl space, and then dig conduit to get them to the points where I want them now. And that's just kind of a big headache. And same thing with the plumbing. Because I use PEX plumbing, I could have pre-ran all of my PEX plumbing. I really wish I had done that beforehand. Okay, enough of that. Let's head into the studio and into the main house and let me walk you through some of the other things. There were huge design and build mistakes that I totally wish I had done differently and it would actually have saved me a lot of money. All right, let's go. Okay, we're back inside the main house now, and the next thing that I regret, or I wish I'd done differently, is I found a designer or architect that pushed back on what I wanted. I know it sounds kind of weird because I'm paying the money to design what I want, but at the same time, I don't know that much about design, and I know things that I like. So for example, this open concept plan that you can see behind me, and then right here, you can kind of see it's kind of dark with the stairway that's open all the way down, and then the open railing on the side, obviously. Basically, up there, third floor, First floor, you can hear everything. And this open concept doesn't really allow a lot of soundproofing and it allows heat and cooling to escape pretty quickly. Now, the same note, it allows you to be able to speak to somebody on the first floor from the third floor, but in regards, I wish if I had to do it all over again, I would have asked for my designer to kind of push back and tell me a little bit more of what he knows or what he has experienced when designing open concept homes. And the next thing that I regret is taking time and doing things well and learning how to do them, especially if you're brand new. So as you guys can see over here, I built and designed this stairway by myself. Now, because of that, I didn't really know how to finish along the bottom. So now it looks okay from a distance right here, but as we get in closer, you can see that I didn't really trim it out correctly. And there's this ugly gap that eventually I'm planning on like caulking or doing something or doing some sort of trim that makes it look a little bit better. Small annoyances like that just kind of bother me and I want to fix it, but I just need to take the time and actually fix up. But in hindsight, I should have just done it right the first time. Now to piggyback on this, the other thing too is when I first set out to do this, and I know a lot of you guys out there want to do it, the DIY, 
it works, DIY is awesome, but there's certain things that if you don't know how to do it and you're trying to learn, that's fine, but I wouldn't have tried to build all my vanities or my countertops myself, and this is the reason why. So this is a concrete countertop, and it looks all right from a distance, but once you get closer, but you can kind of see that it's not perfectly flat. And then also you can see like I didn't really take into account all this cracking, and then I did the waterfall effect this slab is freaking heavy. This probably alone is probably about two or 300 pounds. And so I eventually had to put in bolts to hold it together um, attached to the cabinets because it was slowly starting to peel away. So just stuff like that, I wish I had known or taken more time to do it correctly the first time. All in all, for my very first concrete slab, I'm pretty happy about it. Okay, we're back in the studio, moving to the last three big regrets or things that I would have done differently building out my own place. And the next one is designing a house that has potential resale value. It's really important to design and build your house to your taste and what you need. But at the same time, unless you're truly planning on dying in that home, you want to be able to sell it. And I knew that, but I still built this home very uniquely for myself and my needs. And that was part of the reason why I decided to move away from that all metal siding. It's just that it's not very resellable or it doesn't hold its value. So I switched it to the premium James Hardy brand, which I know has a lot wider appeal. But then also I know that in the country, in the area that I live, this more modern shipping container look isn't well sought after unless I find the exact right buyer, which I think a lot of millennials and people my age who are moving out toward this country would buy something like this. But if I had to do it all over again, I would really reconsider building a place that can meet my needs and also meet the needs of other people or other potential buyers in the future. Because even now, as I am contemplating whether to move to Austin, Texas, even overseas to either Australia, Tasmania to be exact, or even New Zealand, I'm thinking about per perhaps selling this home or selling this piece of property. Now, if you asked me five years ago, I would have told you that this is my forever home. Like I would stay here forever or at least hold on to a piece of property forever. But with new circumstances, changes in you know politics, government, all this stuff, and other opportunities, I want the option to be able to sell the house and still retain all of its value. So for you, my advice is, if you're thinking about building, designing a piece of property or land, really consider what it is that you want and find the balance between what it is that you want and what other people would want if you do need to sell it within the next two, three, five, 10, 20 years. And then my next regret, which just sounds so silly because I was trying to build a simple tiny home at first and then it moved into a small home and then a container home and then a 10 container home, is build bigger than you expect. And the reason behind this is because you just end up running out of room. You never can build large enough. This is my studio. You guys have seen my studio. I have my walk-in closet over here. This was supposed to be the bedroom. I quickly outgrew it. Just with the camera gear, um, clothes, Sarah moving in and all this stuff like that, that is not large enough. And I built the rest of the home to be relatively small. I don't have a lot of storage because I don't have a lot of stuff. But as Sarah moved in and we accumulated more stuff, I took on more hobbies. I got more properties. I got more uh, rentals, just things accumulated like furniture and tools. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and just be a consumer and take a lot of stuff. But when you're designing a house, both again, kind of bleeding back into what I just said, is design for a home that you can grow into. Now, if I were to have kids and start a family, this home is really pretty tight. And that's why we're building the shipping container home with another rental and a shop over there so we can utilize this whole house for the family. So in hindsight, do it all over again. I'd probably built like a three car large garage instead of just a two car garage. I would have built a separate shop that was way bigger, like probably a 40 by 40 foot minimum shop with a separate apartment attached to it. And then last but not least, is define a budget and the time frame that you want your project or your build to be completed by or with. And then take the amount of money and multiply it by two, and then take the time frame and multiply it by four. This is if you're doing it yourself, and even if you hire somebody else to do it, you gotta multiply a small premium to both of those because it's never on budget and it's never on time. And if it is on budget and it is on time, you're paying extra for that constructor or that general contractor to build everything on time and on budget. But when we're doing it ourselves, it is understanding and budgeting time and money wisely. Originally, I thought it was gonna take me a year to build this place out. At the end of it, including design, engineering, permitting, all that stuff, it ended up taking about three, three and a half years total. So about almost three and a half times longer than expected. Now I walked away from this relatively on budget. I think I was only over by maybe 10 to 20%, which isn't that much when I'm doing a brand new build project all by myself. So budgeting more wisely, both time and money, is definitely something the forefront of my mind 
for all future projects. Now in the end, it was totally worth it. I learned so much. I have a brand new skill set that I can actually monetize and capitalize and take on to other opportunities. And at the end of the day, I have my own place that I live mortgage free. And it's a home that I generally feel proud of living in and being able to fix everything that goes wrong because a lot of stuff tends to go wrong sometimes because I built it. No, I'm just kidding. There's some stuff that I do need to fix from time to time and maintain, but nothing's too horrendous. And once you've really gone through the process and you built a house from the ground up, you kind of know all the nuts and bolts of the house, literally, and you can fix almost anything. Have any of you guys built anything? Have you built your own shed or your own office in the backyard or even perhaps your own home cabin or anything like that? Let me know down in the comments section. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to start following me through this journey as I build out this property with more income streams and I buy more property doing more of the same. And hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and then learn how to make money with property. I love you all. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.